Everybody, tonight we have an, an equation where x is not only the index of the radical, but it's also uh, part of the input of the square root function. So let's let's try to motivate the very first step on this. Let's let's work with something slightly more concrete. Let's say, what if we have one over um, the fourth root? Well, let's just say five. Okay, equals to y. Okay. Now, taking the fourth root and, and, and raising to the fourth power are inverse functions. So you can just think of this as 1. When you, when you raise both sides to the fourth power, you get 1 over root 5. Excuse me, 1 over 5 is equal to y to the fourth. Okay. Now that's pretty straightforward, and that's really what's going to guide us on this particular problem. Now, technically, folks, we have this would be 1 raised to the fourth here, right? Uh, but 1 raised to the 4th is just 1, right? So that's kind of convenient that we have a 1 in the numerator here. So let's proceed. Um, now, what we do is we actually raise both sides to the x power in the same way we raise both sides to the 4th power. So that has the effect of wiping out this radical just like it did right here. You see how we went from the 4th root of 5 to just 5? Very same thing happened right here. We have 1 to the x, which is 1. And we just have 343 right here. Okay, and now notice we still have uh, this radical, the square root of this binomial raised to the x power. And I'm leaving it in radical notation. I, don't, I see no need to do rational exponents. Okay, now what can we do with this? We can square both sides because remember this is just an understood index of 2 right here, right? So we can definitely square both sides is what, what I do on the very next step. And we end up with this more manageable looking situation here. Now notice that this, this piece right here is the same as 1 over uh, 7 to the 6th power. And that follows from the fact that seven, uh, 7 cubed is 343, folks. 7 cubed is equal to 343. Okay, so we, in other words, we can equate this right-hand side with 1 over 7 to the 6th power. Now, you know that this is a prime number. Not that, I don't think that has a whole lot to do with it, but this is a unique representation. And so there's not many possibilities right here. In fact, you can just tell by inspection 1, 1, right? So it's very clear. It's very clear that x must equal to... 6, right? I mean, that's, and again, I'll say inspection. And that's totally, if you've made it this far and you can see a solution, that's fine. In these, in these competitions, uh, even IMOs and, and the, you know, these uh, high-end math competitions, inspection's a legitimate way to solve a problem in those contests. You, they don't want you just, uh, I mean, guess really, but if you get to this stage, it's very clear that x equals 6 uh, satisfies it. 6 plus 1 is 7, and then 7 to the 6th power, there you go, okay? So x equals 6 is a solution. I'm not sure if there's any other solutions, folks, but this is definitely a solution. That's why I was careful about the way I worded this. I just said find an x, okay? But x equal to 6, and it's very easy to verify that um, right here. Um, if you put a 6 right here, uh, you can see that... I'll just write this down. The square root of 7 raised to the 6th raised to the 6th power is equal to 343, right? Now, the square root of 7 didn't necessarily, you know, we didn't really have to tendency to try to solve for that, but you really, there's no need to. Uh, the square root of 7 raised to the 6th power is 343 because the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is just 7, Okay. But again, this is the solution. Let me know what you thought about that. Good night.